Okay, so how to bring the masses, as I mentioned, is uh, the file new, no? But the, the first thing we need to do is actually in Rhino, oh, that's gonna take a while, to export it as SAT, no? Once we export as SAT, the Rhino file, we can bring it into uh, Revit. Otherwise, there's no way you, I think you can import a DWG, but does not support uh, wall conditions, floor conditions, and roof conditions. So you, you shouldn't do that kind of a translation through DWG. You should do it through SAT if you want this idea of selecting faces, okay? See, so this is coming along. In, I'm going to talk first about other things. If I actually create a wall here, um, that we're setting the type, we're saying the shape, and we're saying like up to what level it goes. This is the conventional or the standard way of working with Revit, as you probably know by now. Okay, so we have this file. If I go to three, three D, this is the wall, and. Uh, we haven't talked about it, uh, but in the videos are is mentioned often. Is what do we do if we if we have a wall that is actually not does not exist under the types that we have here? No? So I want one with this particular layers or this particular materials, one after the other one, this thickness that doesn't exist. What do we do? No, and this is not only for walls, but in general for everything. There's the edit type option. You can edit the type in many ways to accommodate the type of wall that you want, okay? Before you change anything, and I'm pretty sure in the videos I mentioned uh, oftentimes that do not just start changing things. Don't change uh, the, the layers of the wall, don't change the thickness of the wall. Do not change anything before always duplicate. With duplicate is meaning uh, give me another file and rename it. No, so if you want to do an exterior brick on CMU, but it's now it's a different thing, brick on I don't know on glass or whatever it is. No, so you will type this, or if it's a, a different type of material, you will rename it. This uh, duplicate and renaming is fundamental. Okay, once you have duplicated, this means you have saved it as in a way. You can edit, you can change stuff, whatever you want. It's up to you. If you change it before, you were changing an existing type. And that means that if you were to create another wall and you select that type, the title does not correspond with the changes that you have done. So it becomes a, a problem. Now that's why the duplicate option before you change anything is fundamental. And it's best practice when you're gonna work in an office in the future or for your own understanding of what's going on in your Revit file. Again, duplicating before always if you're going to actually edit anything. So once you have duplicated like I did, you can edit. And here is the, the famous interface that I also talk in the videos quite a bit. I want to create my own wall. It's a crazy wall, has many layers, or it's a very simple one. I just don't find it under the types. Uh, here's where you recreate the wall that you want, okay? You can delete layers. And as you delete, notice how the layers are being are disappearing here in the preview, which by the way, you can click here on preview. Uh, you can also change the function of the layer, which is basically what it is for. And for finishes, the, the one that you should know is finish one or two, which is basically the degree of importance. So you can you probably want to select five if it's more important than four if it's less, no? Material, here's important because we're gonna talk a lot about materials as we move forward. Uh, but right now, uh, the simple ones, I think it's enough for you to understand. There's a series of standard materials that you can find in Revit. Uh, and that's where you will be selecting the material. The great thing about Revit, if you select the material, you can obviously search it like wood. You can click on a material and the material appears there. That means that that face of that wall will render as a cherry wood material. Okay, so the material is linked to how it renders, okay, directly. And the thickness, notice how if I change the thickness, the image changes automatically, okay? 
So say, okay, you have a new one, you say, okay. And notice how that one that I selected and changed that it is different from the other ones. That interface, you should start becoming very, very used to. This is again under edit. So select the wall, edit type, duplicate, edit, and change all these parameters to your best interest. One thing that, for example, does not exist, you can have a curve wall. So if I do a wall and an arc wall, for example, here, that's a wall that is curved. But I can't do a single glass, only glass made uh, curve wall, no? Because if I do a wall and curtain wall, curtain walls are actually uh, made of panels again, as we talked last class, and you cannot actually create a curve uh, wall condition, no? So how can we do this? We can select this wall, edit the type, uh, duplicate, sorry, and we can call it a glass and maybe one inch, for example, and then edit and delete everything except the one here in the middle. You should keep one layer inside of this core boundary layers above and below. This, what it means, this is like a parenthesis, the dark gray components here. And it means that whatever is inside of that is the thing that is holding the wall. Okay, for example, in this one, it was the uh, concrete. But if it's a normal partition, it will be the metal studs or the wood studs. That's the, the thing that holds the wall. No? Here in this case, we can imagine a very expensive uh, wall that is actually structure and is only made of glass. No? So we can say glass and select here this one and then give it a one inch thickness. I just did a curved glass wall by editing the type of this. So this, if I go to the rendering options, shaded, that's actually made of glass, no? So this is the only way, because if you try to do a, a really a curved wall, the only way to do it is through this mechanism, through the edit type, because again, uh, if you create a curtain wall, it's made of flat, and that's the only way to do it, flat panels, okay? Let me see if the Rhino is coming along to do the other options. Slow. Any questions about this? That means in a way, if you want a very crazy wall that is a little bit curvy, I, you either create a curtain system and you add a lot of mullions uh, to shape it to that curvilinear form, or you create this other wall by edit type and create a single layer of glass. Potentially it's impossible to build this option, the last one, but you can imagine yourself in the future where working with glass is highly sophisticated and so on. Low. There you go. Okay, so again, as I was mentioned, you're in Rhino, and what we're doing is export selected. Everybody probably has done this several times. S A T. Anybody can see it? Okay, and you give it a name, base project. Uh, you will do the same thing with your own project and do it in a second. You save it and say, okay. And then you go to Revit and you do a new conceptual mass. Uh, if you can't find it as we talked in class, you just need to find this folder. Uh, the, probably the best way if you don't find it is to go to the uh, new family and go to English Imperial conceptual mass. And there you will find it. This opens an entirely different interface. The first video of the second set, 
talks about how you can create your own masses very fast. Uh, but here, what we're doing is basically inserting. No? So we're going to actually insert import cat. And then here's where we go to SAT. Where did I save this? Chosen models. Okay, you select it, open, and there it goes. Now, here's the first moment you have to say, am I in a, in a good spot or not? It has to be made in this panel and that panel. That's the zero, zero of the conceptual mass. If that's not happening, then your Rhino model is not properly addressed. Red and green, zero, zero, it's correct. Another student had the problem of the units. So make sure your units here are set to feed feet and inches, because that's fundamental, okay? Otherwise, it was gonna come like a micro, very little model there. Okay, basically we save this file, and conceptual mass base project. And basically we load it into the project. Remember, if you have only one project open, it will take it directly, okay? is telling me that hey, you can't see it or you see it, it's different things. And look what's happened here, it tries to place it, no? So here maybe uh, Victoria, that was something you have to be a little bit worried. Before you place it anywhere, blindly escape that. Go to the side view and click on component here to bring back the latest uh, imported file. And here you snap precisely to the zero, zero. If you do that, you now can check that level ones are okay, that actually elevations are properly set, that the zero zeros on the bottom, and this one you can move up and down depending on what you need later on, okay? Okay, we have the mass. So as I mentioned in the first two videos, you can start creating walls instead of the classic way from here to there kind of thing. You use only the massing and side options. You say wall, type of wall, Select face, one face, a thousand faces, whatever you need it to be. Okay, floors, or roof, let's say it's more simple, type of roof, select the face above, create floor, roof, sorry. Et cetera, et cetera. For floors is different. You select the mass first, mass floors, select the level two, or one, whatever you want it to be. And then it creates this little plane. Okay, that plane is a potential floor. So that you can select floor now by face, select the type of floor, click create floor. Okay, good thing about that floor or bad thing, whatever you see it, it's just that it's linked to level. Now, so if I take down the level, Also, that floor comes down, and look how what happens with the roof. The roof is also associated with the level. So, what I should have done, and I say in the videos, is to create a level for the roof beforehand. So, snap there, and you can even rename it as level roof, and then create the level roof. associated to the level roof, no? Got it. Et cetera, et cetera. The video has, you know, how to push the, place the curtain walls, uh, the floors, uh, the windows, et cetera, et cetera. And let's imagine here I'm done with the first two video tutorials. I'm happy, excited, wonderful, I'm done. Now I only have nine to go, I get depressed. But I do it nevertheless because my professor is asking me to do it. So what can we do? What are we gonna do? 
next steps. And the second set of videos, the nine videos, starts with a different project. It starts from the beginning. I recommend that you sit down and you hear to what I had to say in that semester. And you're gonna notice that everything or most of the things that I'm saying are exactly the same things that we did in the first two videos. Around the video number three, that's when I take over and I continue this moment of the interface or the project with more material. What material? I delete this thing, just imagine. We'll bring in other projects. So I'm gonna open in Rhino, uh, my other projects. This one, for example. If he wants to, there you go. Notice that it's not a simple model. Most probably I'm risking uh, bringing this one to Revit. And most probably I won't be able to select most of these faces into partitions just because of its complexity. But I'm gonna try nevertheless so you can see how it works. Again, I'm gonna select the, the monster here. I'm gonna say export selected. I'm gonna make it an SAT and I'm gonna call it like project A, for example. Okay, say okay, go back to Revit. Again, new conceptual mass, mass, open. Opens the interface, which is empty. Insert, cut, SAT. And where is this? Project A. Okay, here's already telling me, cannot import the file. So maybe it's an opportunity to say, what the hell? Should I just surrender already? Or maybe it's an issue of, of units. Most pro, oh, yeah, actually I have a problem with units. Funny, so maybe I did this one on a, uh, yes. Sorry. So that's something that you're probably gonna have as a problem as well. Okay, I'm gonna save it and try it again. What's going on? Let's see if now it works. Otherwise I will try with a different model. SAT. Project A, replace. See, that's when you start getting mad, no? Like with a professor, like it's going crazy. Let's see if it works here now. Okay, so maybe that's just a complex model. Let me see a different one. This is correct, select. I know why that one, <laughs> I know why that one was not working. I think it's one that I was working for, was helping you Victoria not with. So maybe <laughs> you had the, the problem with, um, with the units maybe. Okay, that's in fit for sure. Revit, I did the new mass. Let's go and select the B option. And there is, okay, so this one is correct. I can save it. Um, project B. Load family into project. Comes here, wants to place it different areas or, and we definitely need to escape that go to side view and component to bring the latest one. You can zoom in to make sure you're going to the zero, zero. And there you go. Here's a point where many times it might tell you, I'm, we're not gonna compute, well, this model won't be able to compute floors or volume, I think it's called, but you can still do uh, walls. Okay, so here's what I have now. I'm gonna actually isolate the element. 
And this is the model that I brought from Rhino. Um, here you can start using again the massing inside. I can say wall, I can say an interior partition, for example. What type? This one, and I can select faces. Some faces are very complex, and sometimes it will tell you I'm not going to do that. See right here, can keep wall extend to wall. Sometimes you need to enjoin elements. What it's saying is that this is not a perfect connection. Given that we're not trying to be super precise, that that's uh, okay with with me at least. Maybe. Okay, so I'm just basically following the same criteria here. And so far it's doing it, obviously with some uh, little details that are problematic, but in general, these type of geometries are accepted. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm going to do this one too. Okay, so what did I do just now? I, from this proposal, I decided to create partitions in this kind of a bubble world. I can turn off the mass. Ultimately, you have to turn it off. Nevertheless, uh, because you you don't have to present it, you present what you have created out of the out of that mass. These walls that I have right here. Okay, if I go to the level one. I get to see the form. Maybe this one should be in the in the exterior. Okay. So and then maybe from another proposal, I select another one. So let me. Go ahead and do that very fast. I'm going to select another proposal. It wasn't you, Victor, it was Alexa. Such a mean person I am. This one. Okay. Select, export, CT, project C. Bring it into Revit, again, the same way. So we do a new, every time you have to do the conceptual mass, bring it through there. Is the only way you can bring this, these guys. Okay. Insert, cut, SAT, select the option. If it works okay, you don't have an, an error here. So go to the zero, zero, zero coordinate. There you go. Just check that the zero, zero is correct. Save it. Project C. Load into project. And again, it tries to place it whatever. Really, you can choose where. Okay. I'm going to escape that as always. Okay, I'm going to turn it on to see the masses and then go to the side view and component. Bring it to the zero, zero. I'm 
Oh, that seems to be a heavy one. Some of your files could be crazy. Just be patient and put it into the zero zero carefully. There you go. The zero zero is fundamental because this is the only way to make sure that this works, no? That the, the models are corresponding exactly with the shell that you created before. Why is it going forever? I think the machine is in a deja vu, no, or something. There is, okay. That one was a heavy one, that's why it's not. So here's where it gets messy. You have three conceptual masses all together, but you can just start selecting some of them, you know, the ones that are bothering you and just right click and hide the element. You can bring them back afterwards, or you can select the one you want to work on and say, you know, isolate the element as well, you know? You can work with that. And, and then explore what are the things that I can take from this model that I could use, no? And maybe, I mean, I know there was something here in the middle. Let me see if I can actually, yeah. So maybe uh, this curves here, I can use some of that. So let me do that. Select, isolate, and maybe walls, a different type of interior partitions. I could duplicate it because I might use a different material later on and then select and see if it works here. You see how there are little partitions here, very funky ones. And again, I'm oftentimes I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do that for you, which I don't know. Sometimes you can just change, for example, the current system. Current system normally allows you to do more sophisticated options. Let me see if it works here. Okay, now normally you will need to duplicate this option 5, 10, you can say 10, 20, for example, and change the numbers here. Spacing, sorry, it could be two. One, let's see what happens here. And this again is a curtain wall. So what it's doing is it's creating these curtain walls, uh, mullions and, and systems. Now I can change this element. I'm basically just changing the parameters of the mullion configuration by distance. And we talked about this in the previous video where we were talking about the, the grids and the mullions of a curtain wall. And you can change this to edit the number of mullions, the number of grid elements, and make it as, as you see fit. There you go. Okay, so I decided those are the ones I might want to go with and that's it, not the rest. I can just say, turn off the masses and bring everything out. You can read all that so you see what's going on. Okay, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that goes through it, why not? I'm not sure. It's up to you to create a funky project that is complex and sophisticated and elegant at the same time, okay? So I, I chose, I brought three conceptual masses. The one, the first one was the conceptual, the base project to create the shell. Then I brought the one with this little, uh, 
lofts that I did and I created some kind of a cocoon in the middle, but you know, it could be whatever other shapes. I, I think Haley's probably was very interesting in terms of like, almost like morphing uh, blobs or something. And then I brought a different one to create another set of options here. Now, again, to the question of, do I have to bring all of them and take a little bit? No, to that question, you can choose only one, the one you love, one you like, the one works and go with it as best as you can. You can accommodate a little bit in Rhino, bring it in different ways, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it's up to you decide how you want to go about it. For the wall that has the doors on it um, in our uh, base project, like project A and D, do we have to keep the doors in the same place? No. Okay. We can, can just make, change them to like an opening or yeah, something. You can make an opening. You can make a, you can make a, I'll talk about this now as well, which is a little bit the curtain walls a bit more extended. You can make a curtain wall that is irregular and then place a door uh, within the curtain wall, for example. So you can have both the opening that is irregular, but a, a conventional door as well. Okay. Uh, so no, you, you can move the door, you can replace it for an opening, as long as there's a communication with that area, because that's theoretically there is uh, there there is a need to uh, to an access to the space. No, that's fine. Okay. Any more thoughts? Okay. In the videos, I also talk about you know many things. Uh, I talk about how to create a rendering with grayscales. I don't want the renderings that I I already talked in the previous videos that you click on the render. Okay, I only want renderings for this particular uh, panel, panel number two. I only want renderings that are grayscale, okay? And in the video, I talk carefully about how we actually generate a nice, well, not nice, it's a, they're not great, but this is basically a simplified version of, of what would be later on a nice rendering. And, and the idea is that we turn on our shading uh, to start having sun coming in in different ways. And you know that's when a, a wall, if a, a wall is actually in, in glass material, it matters a lot. So we need to make sure those are actually uh, done properly. Because no? if you have that, look how much light comes in through the other side, et cetera. No? So this, these things matter a lot, uh, whether you have a skylight in the roof or you have a curtain wall system in the side, but notice how the shadows are not like that particularly nice, no? So if you put shaded, this is color. We don't want any color condition. We want hidden lines. This is a must that everybody has to follow. So it's a hidden quality, but with shadows. The, the thing that you can do though, is actually go to, maybe they have changed this. The render settings. And, and again, it might be confusing. It says render settings is the settings of the camera as you see it in the camera. It's not the settings here of the rendering. I know it's just confusing, but this is like the way these render settings, how we see uh, the interface of that camera in this particular view in Revit. So we will click here, edit, and we can set these parameters. No, there's not this, sorry. Visibility in graphics, sorry. This is where ah, graphic displays option. There you go. Here's where you can uh, change uh, the parameters of the shadow. So you can click on show, show ambient shadows and apply, and it gives you a bit more of a faded gray quality. Um, you can also create a bit more lighting or the, the, the shadows a bit more dark, less dark here uh, to make it a, a look a bit better. Okay, so this one of the shadows, it's important, I think, to get a nice a grayscale quality. And then the shadow ambient, show ambient shadows, I think it's an important one as well, okay? You can also click on the smooth lines and it will create a bit more smoother quality of, of shadows, but uh, I don't think it's that necessary. It makes it a little like, like a sketch or like a drawing. Okay, this is the one that goes to your InDesign panel. And you're asked to do many of them, five, 10, uh, 
choose different shots that are, you think are interesting, this should be helping us uh, later on deciding which one is the best possible shot of your project, okay? So that, that's about the rendering world, grayscale. Uh, if it's too dark, it might be that you just don't have enough opening. So maybe you want to explore the idea of opening lights from the roof or maybe exploring that will have bigger windows. But I think in general, because there's a curtain wall in one side and there's a series of windows on the other one, in general, it's okay in terms of light. Another requirement, it's a must, is the idea of how we represent the feeling of the walls, okay? We, if you were in construction documents, you would be doing, uh, presenting your projects with uh, the course view or the detail view, which basically shows all of the layers in a specific hat for each of the layers of a, of a wall. No? If, if you have, for example, the sheet rock here coming in and the metal studs in the metal, et cetera. No? Uh, but in our case, uh, I want only a black fill wall for all of the projects to have consistency. How do we do that? And if you have done already the two first videos, though you have played a lot with the visibility and graphics, so you're kind of bored about it already. But if you haven't, this is an important moment to listen. VV or VEG as in visibility and graphics allows you to change how things, how different families, uh, how different categories actually look in the screen, okay? So, for example, if I want to change how the walls look, I will go to walls. And now we need to understand how all of this stuff, um, what does it mean, all of these things that we see here? We have projection surface and cut. So if you're cutting a wall, you're gonna be able to change, and that's the override, is change the standard. Override in a way is change the standard. You can almost call it like a synonymous in that sense. I want to change how the walls are cut. I want to change the standards, how the walls are cut. I want to change their lines and their patterns, okay? If I imagine I'm actually under course view, visibility and graphics, walls, I want to change how the cut of the wall is the line color. And so I can actually say, give me a red color, just for the sake of it, and maybe a thicker one, okay? And I can overwrite this to be a solid line, okay? So here's how I'm cutting the walls, and this is the override. I change the standards to this. Notice how every time a wall is cut, this is not cut, this actually is a projection, all of these light grays. When I cut a wall, the line is red. Okay, so that's very useful for different presentations. If you wanna go back to the standard, you click there again and you say, do not, no override. And it goes back, what happened there? Sorry, you have to change all of them. No override and no override, okay? So all of them have to be to no override, meaning do not change the standards. But I can change the pattern. I could say, give me the foreground or the background. Uh, this is where we set the solid fill. And the color, we're saying black. But imagine you wanna do it a red just for the sake of it, because maybe in your project red is or pink is an important thing, okay? And you wanna declare it even in the fill of the wall, then you can actually do that as well. No? So what we're doing is not using pink, although why not? As long as it's consistent throughout, um, that's fine. But I'm pretty much asking for the black and white kind of a filling throughout the entire panel. So visibility and graphics walls, that should be set. Oops. By the way, you can change pattern as well. I'll do it in a second. This is the override that I'm asking from you. Okay, it looks clean, um, clear, straightforward what wall is versus what wall is not. Okay, this is the type of plan and section 
I need you to place in the InDesign panel. If I do a section, the same, you have to do this for every single view. So if I have a section here, uh, you have to do it again, this is in graphics, you need to go to walls and overwrite the pattern. So it's actually black fill. Okay, so every single wall that's cut will be like that. What are the other options? If I go to visibility and graphics, I go to walls, I could potentially override the way it looks when I'm not cutting it in projection, meaning I'm sitting in front of me. I can change the line color. I can override this to be, let's just say, a uh, dash line for whatever reason. And in like this red magenta, okay, just to be a, an, a little thicker. So that's override. This is the lines of how the surface or the projection of the walls will look like. Notice how every single wall now, now it looks from outside, again, the projection with a dash line. It could be useful because you might create a different set of you know views. You can duplicate the view and you can say, all of the views that are not in, in this view, I want to make everything dash except this element that I keep it in, in red color. So it's almost like creating diagrams in 3D, no? And again, you can duplicate as many times the view. We talked about this. So you can actually say duplicate the view and rename as many times as you want to say diagram two, no? And here in this diagram, I could, set this to a different um, option. I can go to walls, for example. I can overwrite this. I could change the pattern. I could say, give me a pattern for every single wall. I want it to look filled with uh, green. Okay, that's how you get the walls in green colors. Okay, you might think it's too much, then you can go back to that particular element and say, I don't want the field, I want actually like a cross, cross hatch. And it gives you that cross hatch. Again, for doing, to create diagrams, this is a fantastic, it's also vector based, so you can take it to Illustrator and and change slightly the thickness and so on as you see fit. No? And finally, for walls, for example, you can override the transparency. So, oftentimes, especially in tier design, you might have the roof on top. I don't think I have it here now. But let me create a roof very fast here. Okay, this is a funky roof I created, why not? Change the type. And I imagine I want to actually create a different color for the roof. I can go to visibility on graphics, roof. And I could say, well, the roof is gonna be like in, uh, in a different pattern. Let's say diagonal up. There's gonna be a different color as well. Let's say magenta. Okay, that will give me this room with a particular hatch, but I could also do just make a transparency. Let's go to the roofs and say, I want a transparency of 70%. Now I, the roof is there, but I can see through it, no? I can, I can see what's behind and I can see the roof at the same time. So this is actually, for again, for creating diagrams. And all of it is vector-based. So when you take it 
uh, you can actually bring it to Illustrator and fix and, and do whatever you think you need. So I could duplicate that view and I could rename as diagram three or whatever it is. And I could also do what is called exploded analysis, which if you select an object or a group of objects, automatically you're given uh, this little guy here. This is displace element. So you can click on that and automatically you get a gizmo similar to the one in Rhino and you can move this thing up. I can also select this wall and click again. For everything that you wanna displace, you need to click the element and then click on the option of displace. And then I can select this wall and also this place. I can select this wall, this place. And that goes if you select the entire stair, you can move it up, right? Columns, right, left, et cetera, et cetera. The good thing about this option is also that when you select uh, one of the walls, you have the path. So you can start clicking and it gives you automatically the path of where is it coming from, the origin of that particular point for both walls, rules or anything that you have displayed on. And not only that, you can move around the object and the paths are adapted, no? So normally you will go to an isometric view here. You might want to hide the, the views sorry, the levels, and that will be your explored analysis. I encourage a little bit of, why not, color and uh, done through visibility and graphics and then explore analysis. In your case, you have many more objects to explode. You have a stair or a couple of stairs. You have floors that you can select all of them. Um, you know, you have the windows that you can display in a different way. So your explore analysis should look a bit, obviously much more sophisticated than this. Okay, so that would be another element that you can bring into the InDesign um, file. Okay, uh, when we, let's imagine I have a stair. I'll create a stair very fast. Okay, and I brought this stair and this other one, and I'm going to move now the stair to, and I think it's because I can't see through this. What is going on? If you're cutting the stair at the, and you actually imagine is this is the type, but you could also have like the monolithic stair, okay, which is made in concrete. You're cutting the stair as well. No? So, oops. There you go. So you're cutting the stair and what's happening is basically that I'm asking you to please also fill the stair with a with a black filling. So the question is how do we actually change that one so it also creates a filling of that component. Theoretically, if you were to go to visiting graphics and stair, there you go, you will need to cut the pattern here and override 
to black field. So every single element that you have, like a roof, there are different categories. Therefore, you have to actually uh, change their um, their um, visibility and graphic component. There you go. So that would be the proper way of presenting the stair, just changing the visibility and graphic for that particular chair. You will do it also on um, Control Z there. For a non-monolithic stair, you just select visibility and graphics and do it again, the stair modification of the cut pattern. There you go. So that will, that's how it will look if it's not monolithic. Okay. Uh, everything, the roof, notice how the roof is not being filled. You have to go to visibility and graphics, um, roof, as we said before, and under the cut pattern, you need to make that solid fill in black. There you go. Okay, and the floors, you will need to go visit everything graphic. The floors, um, if you're cutting a window, you will go to windows, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that you're cutting, every single category has to be rethought no? in that sense. What else, what else? Any thoughts out there? Uh, a lot of stuff going on and Revit is a huge program. Um, the main idea is that you, that you try your best to, first of all, bring the form that you're interested in, that you're happy with the form. And then is the issue of how do I actually take this into InDesign so it looks uh, as professional as possible and as uh, accommodating to the requirements as possible. Thoughts? Again, I created that stair after, so I could potentially create this, select the stair and the whole stair and actually uh, do the displace elements and I could take that one down. When you displace um, elements like that, does that change it in the whole project or just in that view? Just in that view, that's the fantastic thing. Okay. Uh, look what happens if I go oh, to any other one. Let me duplicate a 3D view. And let me rename it as, I imagine I, I don't know about it, I create the diagram for uh, and I'm overriding now walls again, because okay, let's imagine this is your project uh, and you want to displace something and you think, well, I'm just gonna move it up. You know, you do this and that's like the most criminal thing you can do in Revit, no? They, they will search for you in your in your homes and and they will, you know, put you in jail for doing such a thing. Uh, the same with walls, you, you're not meant to ever move things around uh, like you're doing in Rhino because everything is parametric. Whatever you do to one thing is messing with the entire project. So this idea of Rhino that you move one section, up, this is a no-no. This thing that you do in AutoCAD, they usually have a project here, another one I test two things, that's another no-no. Uh, this is a one project, it's integral, should be resolved. Uh, you could have many ways of representing one project. And one of the representation strategies is like the spreaded analysis, but you could also change color, shading, is render, not render, is a, uh, is not there, is there, but just hiding and hiding stuff. But you're not meant to, to be working on two projects at the same time, like you would do in AutoCAD, no? That's something you, you're, not, you're not supposed to do. 
and displacing things, you shouldn't move things. They should be where they have to be. And then there's the option of displacing, which is a command that allows you to displace, no? But that does not affect the project itself. It's just the representation of the project, which is great, actually, I think. Any more thoughts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me stop there.